Hello, my name is Jan Geisler. I'm one of the founders of the CML Advocates Network. What I'm going to do in this webinar is help you getting the most out of the European Hematology Association's Annual Congress, which is happening on 14th to 17th of June in Stockholm. And I want to tell you a bit about the CML stuff that is actually going on at the conference. So what I cover today is first of all, explain the types of sessions at a Congress like EHA and why they are relevant for patient advocates. I want to help you set your priorities when you attend Congresses like that. I want to help you finding and talking to key opinion leaders, so, so the t uh, key um, clinicians at the poster sessions. And I'm going to talk about why the abstracts are important and where to find them. First of all, why does the European Hematology Association's Congress exist and why um, is it being held every year? For hematologists, it's actually a conference to enhance the knowledge of evidence-based approaches on diagnosis and treatment of hematological diseases. So what clinicians are doing is actually presenting or accessing the latest research results from clinical trials and also from translational research, so the biology and in vitro studies. Um, it helps hematologists to be updated on emerging innovative techniques, on diagnostic tools, on risk assessment strategies in hematology and in the different subspecialities, so in the different hematology disease areas like CML. And of course, what they do is communicate, collaborate and network with representatives of a larger international audience, because at this European Congress, it's not only the European clinicians that attend, all, usually all the CML, top leading CML guys are there, um, but not only the clinicians, but also, of course, the representatives of the hematology society on the European, on the international, on the national level, patient group representatives, um, uh, representatives from the medical industry, and of course, of journals and the media. Why are we as patient advocates at EHA? We want to understand science. So it allows us to inform our members and patients about the newest findings, about good and bad research, and about things that are going up on the front of newest research, for example, in CML. Uh, it brings uh, us the opportunity to also bring the patient voice into research because we can speak to clinicians and in industry, we can attend the medical sessions, can also ask questions to the presenters in those sessions. And of course, uh, we can address relevant topics to hematologies and in industry. We have the patient advocacy track in the scientific program, which we as patient advocates across hematology define where we can pick the topics and speakers. Uh, we have an AHA advocacy track, which are topics set by EHA, but we usually provide patient speakers into that. Uh, we have also provided in previous years uh, patient speakers in the education sessions uh, and also in scientific sessions. And of course, for us, it's a perfect place to meet up because everyone from the hematology community is there. Um, there's, uh, there are more than 10,000 people at the European Hematology Association's Congress, clinicians, researchers, nurses, diagnostics experts, industry, medical societies, and so on. So how do you set your priorities? And I'm covering that because of course the tendency could be just to go to EHA to attend receptions and meetings organized by pharma or individual meetings. But actually the main purpose why we're going to a hematology congress is actually to uh, be in touch with science. So always what you do, think about what is the impact for your community when attend a meeting? It's not about presence and representation. It is about what you do at the Congress and what that means to your members. You could spend all your days at EHA meeting with pharma representatives, societies and other advocates. But is this why you came to EHA in, in Stockholm? What is the outcome? EHA is the best place to learn about new science and clinical progress, not only from what they call the kidney key opinion leaders, so the leading uh, clinicians, but from the second row of key people behind the scenes. So the people that are doing a lot of studies, but are probably not the top guys that always stand in front when there's a presentation. So prioritize the EHA session, build your schedule around this, refuse to attend other meetings, while these main scientific sessions are going on, because otherwise you're going to have no time to actually see what is being presented as cutting edge in the scientific session. 
So that's an overview of the EHA program. Uh, and it's a very colorful chart, but you're going to see that chart and the colors all throughout my presentation. Uh, you can see actually here, Thursday, the satellite sessions, Friday, a variety of different sessions, some of them being in parallel, uh, same on Saturday, and the Congress uh, basically ending on Sunday afternoon. And you can see there are different types of sessions where, which are color coded. And I'm actually going to speak through most of them in the next couple of minutes. When you see this PowerPoint, you can also click on the link that you see below, then you get to this chart and you can see it in better quality. So for example, this is a typical plan for a CML advocate at the Congress because I've marked all the sessions where there is a CML specific or advocacy specific activity that is interesting and relevant to you if you're mainly interested in CML. Uh, so you can see there are a couple of satellite symposia of industry on Thursday. There's the capacity building meeting for all patient advocates in the afternoon. There's a poster session on Friday, a poster session on Saturday. There are a couple of clinical sessions, patient advocacy sessions, biology sessions and educational sessions. So that's just an overview. And when later on uh, I take you through the different sessions, you can actually go back to that chart to if you're planning your attendance at EHA, where you might want to go. So these are the uh, session types. You can see the different colors and I'm going to explain the different types in a minute. So the plenary sessions, they're usually opening ceremonies, research awards, very cross cutting topics across the different diseases or key topics that are seen by hematologists of key importance. For us as patient advocates, it's sometimes a bit more difficult because we are quite often not so interested in all kinds of hematological cancers, but sometimes we are just interested in CML. And because these sessions are cross-cutting, it might be there is just one CML presentation or no, no CML present presentation at all. For example, in EHA 2018, there is no CML specific topic in um, the main session. Then the satellite symposia, as said, they're on Thursday. Um, these are symposia sponsored by a single company. So they more or less book a time uh, on Thursday and in that session, they can actually define who and what is going to be presented. So it's on the day before the actual scientific meeting starts. It's often in parallel to other meetings because a lot of medical societies and associations or as investigator meetings are often also held on Thursday. And uh, the data that is presented here is usually pharma compliant because of course the, pro the, the, the pharmaceutical manufacturers are restricted in what they are allowed to present and say um, uh, about their products. And even if they invite external speakers, they are for example, not entitled to speak about off-label use of drugs and so on. They're usually le less complex and more mainstream, more educational. So that's sometimes quite good to get the big picture on a specific topic. Uh, because they are not so scientific and so technical. What they can present at this is only already published data. So the data that is presented later on, on, for example, Friday and Saturday in the scientific sessions cannot be presented in the um, uh, satellite symposium of industry on Thursday. And of course, some uh, of them are sometimes in parallel to our capacity building meeting. This is not the case for CML. Um, this year, but quite often uh, that they're also over. So here are the two CML satellite symposia. There's one on Thursday at eight o'clock. Uh, Pfizer Oncology uh, is presenting, is inviting speakers to speak about targeting the individual personalized treatment in CML. And on Thursday, there's a session organized by Novartis Oncology on recent advances in CML and MPNs. Then the education sessions. Education sessions are in the scientific program, and they usually give a good overview on the state of play and the most important use in your disease area. So for example, in CML, they're usually less complex, good to get the big picture on a specific disease. And they're really meant for physicians that want to inf get the broad picture on a specific disease because they probably don't follow signs on all of them. So they want to know what's happened in the past year and what is the most, for example, recent version of the guidelines or the most, uh, the 
hottest topic um, in that disease area. They're usually repeated twice in two different days. Uh, that actually allows part to participate in two, um, uh, two different topics, two different educational sessions. So they avoid, avoid overlap. So don't miss your educational session. Um, they're quite often a good basis to understand scientific sessions at the Congress. However, there is no education session on CML at EHA this year. Then the most important science is presented in the simultaneous or what they call oral sessions. Um, they are usually um, the, the, the physicians or the investigators that usually want to present data, submit a kind of abstract, a short, short summary in March every year. And about uh, almost 200 of them are selected by the scientific program committee. And uh, some of them um, make it into the oral sessions. The oral session are of highest price. So that's where you're being selected to present your data in front of a wider audience in a presentation room. This is usually what the scientific program committee of EHA, which is consisting of physicians and uh, experts in the different hematological diseases, what they regard as hot stuff. The clinical sessions are very relevant, but usually also very complex. Uh, so very quick, uh, each session has 75 minutes, uh, five presentations of 15 minutes, including Q&A. So if the physicians or the people presenting their data need to be finished in 12 minutes, have three more minutes for question and answers from the audience than next. So they're, they're not allowed to, um, to uh, use up more time. There are two types of oral sessions. One is clinical, one is biology. You're going to see that in the online program. The clinical sessions are usually, I mean, they mean clinical trials with humans, while the biology sessions are more about, about biological me mechanisms and about the basic things like stem cell research and so on that might later on lead on into clinical trials. Um, the biology sessions are quite, are quite often very hard stuff. Uh, hard to digest for us as patient advocates and lay persons, while the clinical sessions are very relevant. If you want to prepare yourself for the session, read the abstract of the session on the web prior to the session, familiarize you with the topic, with the uh, basic data that is being presented, because then it's much easier to follow, because the physicians are usually going through their 12 minutes very fast. Uh, make yourself familiar with typical abbreviations. Uh, you can also use the glossary on CML Advocates Network for that. And uh, when you when you're in the session, if you feel comfortable and feel confident, um, then uh, make yourself heard by queue up uh, at the microphone and ask a question at the end of the session. Um, uh, say that you're a patient advocate and this is your question, and uh, usually get a very good response. And on the other hand. Uh, people also recognize you as a patient advocate in uh, as one out of as you no know, 70 out of 10,000 people which are the patient advocates at this congress here are the cml um simultaneous session there's actually one on saturday 11 30 uh, final results of the destiny study uh, the choices study uh, for the, um, um, the utos long-term survival score uh, the phase two study with ruxolitinib uh, in combination. And um, there's also one about systemic mastocytosis. You can actually see that uh, two of the five presentations, no, three of the five presentations are about CML. Then there are workshops where special topics uh, are discussed in a workshop like settings. There's one about laboratory diagnosis workshop the, this year, one about molecular hematopoiesis workshop. I don't think they're particularly relevant for us as patient advocates, uh, but just to explain, these are smaller settings for workshops on the specific topics, which usually last uh, for quite a while, so more than three hours. Then this is very relevant, a scientific working group sessions. You need to understand that the European Hematology Association, EHA, has a number of scientific working groups. There's one on CML, but there's, for example, also one on patient reported outcomes. And you can actually see uh, here, um, uh, this is the session happening on Saturday uh, in room A12, where the topic of patient reported outcomes um, is and is, is discussed. And that's, that's very... Then advocacy sessions, 
There are two patient advocacy sessions defined by patient advocates. So we actually set the program. We invite the speakers and you can actually see there are two sessions on Saturday, which we define. One is about quality of life. Why still an inconsistent path to a very obvious goal? And you can see that uh, you, you, you maybe know a number of uh, uh, people um, from the patient advocacy community presenting alongside with clinicians. And there is another uh, session later on on Saturday about not only survival, patient relevant endpoints and patient reported outcomes. Uh, where um, I will present and a couple of uh, other experts um, to talk about the continuous discussion about endpoints, overall survival, patient reported outcomes. So these are the sessions that we define. And there are also two advocacy sessions. You need to understand the difference between patient advocacy sessions. Those are the sessions that we define and advocacy sessions. They are defined by EHA to talk about their policy work that they do. And there is one session which might be relevant to you about the IMI Big Data Project Harmony in which I am involved. And the other one is about the real world value of new generation treatments. So the, the very, very controversial debate about value of medicines. Um, and there is another patient advocate with Maria Piggin who will speak there. Then poster sessions. You might think, how boring is that with all the posters uh, being put up there and I will never get through all of them. Uh, and it's usually at the end of the day, so people are tired and they think I'll probably go to the hotel. I would you advise not to do that because the poster session is probably the most exciting time during the Congress because you need to understand that there are usually more than 500 posters and those that have submitted the poster and are listed as first author of the poster are obliged to stand in front of their poster to explain their data. So when you look at these, you can actually uh, meet the top guys that are doing top research because they need to be there. And because the session is uh, basically one and a half hours long, you really get the chance to talk to them very informally. So it's the best place to meet key experts and key of their staff members at the Congress. Um, and uh, there are no silly questions, so I can really encourage you to go there. So how do you find interesting posters? You go to the meeting planner on the website of the EHA Congress, ignore the bio biology, you look for the clinical posters, you look at the first author, um, um, and uh, if you want to meet that person, you can see on the right side, for example, one of the abstracts where Tim Hughes is being mentioned. If you would want to meet him there, you know where he is during that time. Um, for your disease area, note down the lowest and the highest poster number of interest. So you can make sure that you um, know where in this huge room where all the different diseases have their posters, which are the numbers where the CML posters are being put on. Then you go to the poster area uh, at the time when the poster session is there, look by poster number where you need to go uh, and make sure that you look for the right days because there are two different poster sessions on two different days and they have different posters. So don't. Uh, I can't talk you through the, all the abstracts because there are many CML posters at uh, the Congress, uh, but on cmladvocates.net on the homepage, you can actually find a PDF where we have actually also summarized uh, the abstracts with the headlines, the presenter, the aims and the conclusion of each abstract. So you can go very quickly through that list to see which poster you want to see and which experts you can. You can also do a list like that. That's a photo that was taken from one of the advocates that we're working with. Um, and um, uh, it, that was basically from a different disease area. And that's how she actually sorted the poster sessions uh, with the poster number, uh, which board made some uh, annotations um, uh, about her own priority. I can't tell you about what the different characters mean, but they, she has probably, uh, probably prioritized which ones she really wants to see at the, at the poster session. Why are the abstracts on the online website so important? The abstracts are short summaries of scientific news submitted by clinicians who apply to present them at EHA. They're available before the Congress starts. So usually mid of May, they become available for the Congress one month later. So it gives you some time to read and prepare. 
Uh, and because it's always a summary of what is being presented later on, it can help you to prepare, but it can also help you to get the facts right in your EHA report when you return home from the Congress. So I always use the abstracts uh, also to digest what I heard and probably write my summaries for CML. Uh, so how do I access the abstract? You go to the EHA Congress website, uh, you go to the section abstracts online, then you select the 23rd EHA Congress, then for example, oral posters, uh, then enter your disease area, identify those abstracts whose headline is most relevant, and then read the relevant abstract. Then the patient advocacy booth. Over the past years, we also had an advocacy booth uh, in the middle of the exhibition. That's a joint booth of the uh, pan-European uh, patient organizations in hematology, including CML Advocates Network, CLL Advocates Network, MPN Advocates Network, and Acute Leukemia Advocates Network. Use this as, as your meeting point. This year at EHA, uh, we're going to have four tables behind our booth where you, uh, we can uh, hold individual meetings, but we can also, of course, go to a coffee at a nearby exposition booth uh, because they have coffee and then you can sit down and talk to people. So you can actually uh, spend your time at the booth, meet other advocates also from other disease areas. This is our meeting point, patient advocates. How do you find people from companies in your region uh, or Europe at EHA? Uh, usually the patient relations people of all the companies are at EHA, so you can contact them. They can tell you who actually from the company is at the Congress and they can also help you arrange a meeting. They usually also check their email and WhatsApp during the Congress. Um, and uh, you may also ask other patient advocates if they have the contact of a specific company. Uh, of course, you can also staff at the booth of the company because usually they have these kind of receptionists and they know which staff members are there and uh, whether a specific person from clinical, medical uh, affairs or from um, uh, patient advocates, uh, patient relations is at the How do you find the clinician who's at EHA? Again, check the abstracts in the EHA app uh, on your mobile phone or the web-based program. If they're mentioned as first author of an abstract, if it's a poster abstract, you can see them at the poster session when this poster is being presented. And if it's an oral presentation, you could speak them after their talk in that specific oral session. Um, clinical cl clinicians usually go to the scientific uh, sessions presented by colleagues. So if you go to the CML session and you stay there uh, when the last presentation is over, usually the, the, the top clinicians, you find them up front in the first rows talking to each other. So you might also find uh, that person there. You might also send them an email, ask for a meeting during EHA, uh, but the schedule is usually very full. So you should, uh, you should do that some weeks in advance because at EHA, of, of course, everybody's chasing from place to place. So really the, the only time when they really have time. By my experience is the poster. Uh, how do you meet and connect with other patient advocates? Go to the patient advocacy booth, attend all patient advocacy track sessions, um, uh, join our uh, Facebook group where you can see the address here. There's also a WhatsApp group. Uh, join the Swedish tapas meeting on Thursday at nine o'clock. You, you're going to need to pay for your own tapas, but all the patient advocates are going there and it's uh, there's a promise. There's no PowerPoint and no speech and no presentation. So you can really relax, be amongst other patient advocates and network and, and share your views about the Congress and about your advocacy work. So how, how do you provide feedback to your community? How do you write reports? take notes in the scientific sessions and I can recommend taking photos of slides. Make sure you cover at least the title slide and the conclusion slide. The title slide because later on you will find on your uh, mobile phone or your digital camera hundreds of slides that all look the same. If you photograph the title slide you can remember what the conclusion slide afterward is. The conclusion, conclusion slide may, mainly gives you the main summary of the presentation and you can also look up the abstract of the presentation later on that supports you writing your report. Ta also take photos of posters and uh, have a barcode scanner app on your phone because more and more the posters have a small barcode and if you point your mobile phone on that you can actually have them send you the PDF of the poster or you can even download it on the spot. 
um, which helps you to see the full poster because the photo might be bad quality, but the PDF that you get by email is perfect. Try to download all interesting abstracts and then you can simplify them and create a summary for your patient group and the patients you serve. Uh, and if you ask, if you're writing a report on scientific matters, of course, you can ask a friendly clinician whether they are interested at least to proofread a report um, to ensure that it is, it's accurate. But always think who your audience is. Is it patients? Is it patients with little knowledge? Is it patients who want to know this, the cutting edge of science? Are they patient advocates? Is it the member or are they member organizations of yours? Um, they might need a different report depending on who your audience is. So the bottom line, how do you get the best, uh, guess, uh, get the best most, uh, how do you get the most out of EHA? Think about your priorities. There's no better place to meet clinicians and learn about news that are crucial for the life of your patients. Always think about the impact for, of, what, on, of what you do at EHA for the community and for audience. It is not about presence or representation. It is about what you do and how beyond your personal interest that translates for your community. Build your schedule around the key Congress sessions. So first think where the CML sessions are. Refuse to have meetings during them. Try to schedule meetings between these sessions because otherwise you're going to miss the signs and it would be a missed opportunity. Don't go to meetings at EHA before, because you feel obliged. You're there for the EHA Congress and everybody understands to say, I can't make it that time because I want to be in CML session or I want to be at the scientific working group meeting. Everybody understands that. Think about sharing the workloads with other advocates, for example, attending different sessions at the same time that might run in peril and agree that everyone contributes to the report. But in the end, the main thing is Try to learn, use the time for networking, engage with clinicians, experts, and other advocates and explore. And don't be shy, be bold, go to the sessions, ask them questions, and also have some fun with the other advocates. Thank you so much. I hope you felt this is helpful. The slides will be on cmladvocates.net. And I hope I'm going to see you at EHA this year. Thank you so much.